Hey, good morning. It's Friday morning. I hope you are uh, off to a good start this Friday, whenever it is that you're watching this. And uh, you've got great plans for the weekend. I hope your weekend plans involve worship in some form or fashion. Uh, we'd love to have you worship with us at St. Matthew's United Methodist Church this weekend. If you're in the Madison or Jackson area, we'll have our normal schedule of 8.30 worship, uh, 8.30 traditional, 9 o'clock drive-in, 11 o'clock traditional, and 11 o'clock intersection contemporary service. This week I'll be preaching in the 9 o'clock drive-in and in the 11 o'clock intersection contemporary service. So we'd love to have you worship with us. Um, it's going to be a great day. I can't wait to, to worship with you. You can find out more about worship at St. Matthew's by visiting our website at stm-umc.org uh, slash worship and find out more about worship, how to worship, how to get in, you can find your place, all that. So um, check out our website. We'd love to have you worship with us this Sunday or, or any Sunday here uh, in the area. Um, we'd love to have you come join with us. So um, today um, we're going to be looking at Acts. Uh, Acts 4 through 12 is our, is our reading this morning. Um, Acts 4, I'm sorry, 8 through 12. Acts 4, 8 through 12 um, this is our reading where it says this. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of, the, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel, this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, and has become the cornerstone. There's salvation in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven, given among mortals by which we must be saved. Um, this, uh, Peter there is quoting in the end, there's no, the, the stone that you rejected has become the cornerstone. Uh, that's a quotation from Psalm 118. Uh, we're going to talk about what that means in just one second. But before we get to the, kind of the main purpose, the main meaning of Peter's message, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we see in Acts a lot. Where if you, particularly in the first section, when the, church is being born, but then you really see it throughout Paul's ministry as well. You'll see all the time um, a miracle happen. Someone healed, someone cured, whatever, some type of miracle. And then what you'll see with this miracle is that every time a miracle happens, you'll see crowds gather. Oh my gosh, this person who was blind can now see, this person who was now lame can now walk. You see it every time. Miracle, crowd gathers. And then when the crowd gathers, Peter or Paul or whomever will then use the crowd gathering as an opportunity to preach the gospel. Happens over and over and over again. So in the book of Acts, we see a lot of miracles performed, but the key to these miracles, frankly, are not the miracles themselves. But the key to understanding the miracles in Acts is to understand that these miracles are done in many ways to benefit the individual healed, but also to draw, draw a crowd from all around. As the crowd gathers, uh, it's an opportunity for the apostles to preach the good news of Jesus. So in many ways, the miracle is the means by which to draw in the crowd. And then the um, preaching of the gospel is the main thing. And I think that's a good point of clarity for us to remember that the miracle is not, the miracle is not given for the miracle's sake itself, but the miracle is given to point to Jesus and to draw others to Jesus. I think that's a good reminder for us within our lives. If there's anything within us that can draw a crowd... That gift was not given us so that we could look good or that we could promote ourselves. So if you're a good singer and people come to hear you sing, don't fall in love with the gift, fall in love with the giver of the gift and use that gift as a means to point others to Jesus. If you're a good speaker, folks come to hear you speak, don't fall in love with the gift. And remember that the gift is given so that others can come and hear Jesus. The point of all of this, of these miracles, the gifts God given us, things such as that, is to allow us to point as many people as possible to the good news of Jesus. That's what happens here. Miracle, crowd, Peter preaches, people hear about Jesus. That's kind of a common theme and a common practice that happens throughout Acts. I always remember that. So part of the question I think we have to ask ourselves is, what are we are we using the things we have access to, our talents, our platforms, meaning our social media account, things like that? Are we using that to point others to Jesus? Or are we using it for some other purpose? You know. So anyway, uh, that's what that's what Paul was doing. I mean, that's what Peter was doing as he preached after this miracle. 
But I want to talk about what he said in the in the con, beginning of the content of the sermon today, where he said, "The stone that you rejected has become the cornerstone." That, that's a quotation from Psalm one eighteen, and it's a reference to how the religious leaders rejected Jesus; uh, they crucified him, uh, and he was rejected by them. But he, Peter now says, quoting from the Psalm, "This psalm, this stone that you rejected, has now become the cornerstone." In other words, this one that you rejected, this one that you crucified, has now become the cornerstone of faith. And there's no other name by which people can be saved but through Jesus Christ. And that he is now the cornerstone. And the cornerstone, I'm not an architect. So you architects, critique me, tell me if I'm getting this wrong, won't hurt my feelings. Um, a cornerstone is that foundational stone, that capstone, that, that, that stone that holds the entire building together. And so we're told here that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. I think it's important to know that Jesus is the cornerstone of our faith, but frankly, he's also the cornerstone of our life, that he is the thing that our faith must be built around. He is the thing that our life must be built around. And so if we try to place something other than Jesus as the foundation of both our faith and of our life, then it's going to be not right. If there's some other doctrine that you put above salvation, in the name of Jesus Christ, then your faith is going to be a little off, off skew. I love being Methodist. I believe in Wesleyan doctrine. I believe in John Wesley's understanding of the nature of salvation. I believe in John Wesley's understanding of communion. I believe in John Wesley's understanding of holiness. I do. That's why I'm a Methodist. That's why I'm not another denomination. I'm a Methodist. But I would never put being a Methodist above Jesus. Ever. No, goodness gracious, no. Why would I do that? There's some doctrine or some belief, even some belief in the name religious, that we put above being saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, then our faith will be off, will be off center. Then our faith will not be right. It will not be built on a good foundation. I'm not saying other doctrines don't matter. I'm not saying other things aren't important because they're incredibly important. Incredibly important. But they're not Jesus. He's the cornerstone. He's the foundation. So this morning, what is it that's at the center of your faith? Is it Jesus Christ or is it something else? Likewise, he's the cornerstone of our life. And so if Jesus is not at the foundation of our life, then our life will be off center. And what we can do is we can substitute so many other things for Jesus. We can substitute good things. I mean, things that are good, like family, like church, like careers. These are not bad things. But if we substitute these things for Jesus Christ as the cornerstone of our life, things are not going to work out right. I love this quote by Tim Keller about if anything other than Jesus Christ is in the center of our heart, it will crush us and crush them. So let's just use family. Family's a great example. Love my family. My goodness. Family's a highlight of my life. But if my family was at the very center of my life, the very center of my heart, there's no way my family could ever fulfill me in the way that Jesus Christ is. And so what will happen is in time, I will be empty because my family's going to get it wrong. My kids are going to make mistakes. My wife and I will fight. I mean, we're humans, so we're going to get it wrong at some point. That's the way it goes. And that could crush me irrevocably if they're the very foundation of everything that's about me. If my church was the foundation of everything and everything that was about me, it would, it would crush me because there's times my church may struggle, my church may not grow, my church, oh, I don't know, you know? So if that's in, if that's in the place of the cornerstone, then it will crush me. But likewise, I will crush them. Because let's say that my kid's success is the cornerstone of my life. Well, what happens when they fail? You know, what happens when they get in trouble? What happens if something goes wrong? I'll be crushed by that. But likewise, I will probably drive them so hard towards success that I will alienate them and push them away. 
That's what Keller's point is. Keller says that something other than Jesus Christ, the center of your life, then in time that thing will crush you and you will crush it. But when Jesus is in the center, when Jesus is the cornerstone, everything else makes sense. So when Jesus is the foundation of my life, I delight in my family so much. I delight in them so much. They're such a joy to my life. I love them. And I hopefully lay down my, I, I do my best to lay down my life for them as Christ laid down his life for the church. They're the delight of my life. But Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Love my church. Such a joy. Delight in my church. But they're not the center of my life. Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. So today, what's the cornerstone in your life? What's the foundation? If it's Jesus, everything else makes sense. If it's something other than Jesus, it's not going to quite make sense. Today we're told that he's the cornerstone. He's the foundation. He's what it all comes down to. So today, is he the cornerstone of your life? Is he the foundation of your faith? Foundation of your life? Foundation of your all in all? That's what matters. So today, as Peter's message is proclaimed to us again. May it be true. May it be true. May he be the cornerstone of our very lives. Have a great day. Hope to worship with you Sunday. And we'll see you Monday morning. Have a great weekend.